All right, so this is optimization uh, section 4.4, number 6. Okay. So number 6 says, a box with an open top is to be constructed from a square piece of cardboard 3 meters wide by cutting out a square from each of the four corners and bending up the side. So you can kind of envision this. Uh, this is 3 meters right here all the way across. Okay, it's a solid piece of cardboard. And a square is cut out of the side. So this is gone. And so is this. And so is this one and the other one. And then what happens is this is folded right here. And here. And here. And this is making the base, right? So this is the base. And these are the sides. Right? Side one. Everybody see that? All right. Uh, the largest... Now, find the largest volume that such a box can have. So we want to maximize volume. So volume is what we want to piece together here. So the volume of the box. Now, we have to take what we know in the question. And all we know is that the original cardboard is 3 meters wide. We're taking some length out here. We don't know how big these squares should be, right? <clears throat> if the squares are super small, little guys then what we end up having is we end up having a large base, right, with very small short sides, okay? Now that's not going to give us a whole bunch of volume. If we take out a huge chunk like this, right, big chunks like this, you can just imagine, and again, these are kind of the options, then we have a small base, but it's really tall, right? Whoops. <laughs> well, you kind of get what I'm doing, right? So... We want to have somewhere in the middle. This is maximum volume, right? So we don't have this, don't have this. But how do we know? How do we know how big those um, need to be? And so I'm going to carefully try to erase some of these lines here. And um, so what we want to do is just make this X, okay? So we want to maximize volume, and we fi want to find out which little piece, like which length of the unknown X is going to yield us that maximum volume. So... This is 3 meters, and this is x. This is another x. This is x, and so on. So, the volume is going to be the length times the width times the height. Can we get some kind of expression for length here? That's going to be, that's going to be this right here. Right? What is this length? Or, what is this length? And it's um, a square cardboard, so these are going to be the same. So, how can I express this length right here? Yes. The length here is 3 meters minus 2x. You don't have to use your units, but 3 minus an x here and an x here. Got it? This is a square, so 3 minus 2x over here. And what is the height? Well, if this is folded up, the height is x. Right. All right. So, now, I guess originally you could say, so you're saying, well, we're... Okay, it will look like we just have one variable, and we do. Volume is length times width times height. There we have three. So length is, you know, 3 minus 2x. The width is 3 minus 2x, and the height is x. So there we have all three dimensions with just one variable. So we might want to, we don't have to, but we might want to simplify that. You could go volume equals 3 minus 2x all squared times x. Or, if you want to take the time now to expand that out, it might be worthwhile. Okay? So, that is, if you square this, you're going to have 9 minus 12x plus 4x squared, all times x. Okay, does that look right? Did I do that right? I don't know if anybody did it this way or not, but... Um, so, volume is going to be, and I'll just write it in descending order, so 4x cubed minus 12x squared plus 9x. Does that look great so far? Well, if that's confirmed, that's the volume, and now we want to take the derivative, and volume is a function of x right now. So we'll take the derivative, we get 12x squared minus 24x plus 9. Okay. Now, it looks like we want to factor this or find the zeros, right? So we could take a 3 out, looks like. So if you take a 3 out, you've got 4x squared minus 8x plus 3. And that might make it a bit easier to factor. 
And so here you can factor this trinomial by intuition or by the decomposition method. Do you guys remember the decomposition method? Yes, no, maybe so. You, you can do, I mean, you can just try to trial and error it, right? The first two terms have to multiply to this. The next two terms have to multiply to that. So if you did that, what would that give you? Well, that's a minus, so make those a minus. So negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. Do a quick FOIL, you get 6x minus 2x. So negative 6x minus 2x does give you negative 8x. So here is your uh, factored version. Okay? Okay, so everyone good with that? All right. So what are the critical numbers? It looks like we might have two critical numbers, one for this factor and one for this factor. Notice that the 3 is a factor, but it doesn't have an x on it. So there's no critical number. We, we actually, really, right now, we can kind of forget about that because there's no x there. So x is going to equal 1 half and 3 over 2. You see that? So those are the two critical numbers that we have to consider now. Which one yields a maximum? Is there one that yields a max? Is there one that yields, yields a min? Well, what you want to do at this point, yes, you could do sign analysis. Great. You could just kind of think logically now, and, and what you want to do is, this is what I would do. Go back to the question and say, okay, what makes sense for this value of x? If x was... 3 over 2, that's equal to 1.5. Okay? So if x was equal to 1.5, I would have 3 meters, and I would be subtracting 1.5 from this corner, and 1.5 from this corner. And 0 is the width of my box here. Does that make sense? Nope. It doesn't. That doesn't make sense at all. Because you, you, this x needs to be smaller than 1.5. So, it would make sense if we had, you know, 0 0.5 here and 0 0.5 here. That looks reasonable. So, you could actually just sort of use your intuition here and say, wait a minute, if x was 1.5, that means the width of my box, 3 minus 2 times 1.5, I have a width and a length of 0. Doesn't make sense. So, you're going to go with 0.5. All right? And the question actually says, find the largest volume the box can have. So, you know we have a critical number at 0.5. If you want to check to see if that's going to give you a maximum or a, a minimum, well, you don't, this one's going to give you a minimum, right? The 1.5. You have a minimum volume of zero. That's your minimum. So, here is going to be your maximum. You can, you can guarantee it. So, the, the volume is going to be, where was it? It's right here. So, you just do 4 times 1 half cubed minus 12 times squared plus 9 times uh, yeah 9 times 1 half sorry I just do that in my head already so this is 4 over 8 minus 12 over 4 plus 9 over 2 uh, it would be wise to write your answer in fraction form not just decimal form because that's what you're going to have to do in university so fraction form would be best so that's 1 half um, minus 3 plus, um, well, I just said we're going to do fractions, so 9 over 2. So this is going to be um, 6 over 2, right? 3, 6 over 2. So 1 minus 6 plus 9 is in 5, is 4 over 2. So the volume is going to be 4 over 2 or 2. 2. Did I do that right? Okay. So that's your maximum volume, 2 centimeters cubed, given these constraints here. Okay? If they ask you for the dimensions, then you could easily find that. Right? 3 minus 2 times a half, so that's going to be um, 3 minus 2 times well, that's 3 minus 1. So that's going to be 2. Something doesn't make sense here. 3, was it 1 half we used? Uh, that's not right. Is it? Right, because I didn't finish this. I should have finished this, but this 3 minus 2 times 1 half, this is a length of 2, this is a length of 2, and this is a height of 1 half, right? So you multiply those together, 2 times 2 is 4, times a half is 2 centimeters cubed. Okay? Sorry, that's the volume, yep. And the dimensions are length of 2, width of 2, height of 1 half.
So there's your 4.4 number 6. That's how you do that kind of question.